Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm so grateful you're here with me today. And welcome to Art Exploration with Jessica from Color Me Creative, Kelly from Kelly Chassis Fine Art, and me from Indigo Jade Art, where every month in 2020 we are taking a deeper dive and exploring a new color. All three of us met as online teachers, and we just love teaching and exploring new mediums. It's July, and it's also World Watercolor Month, and this month we are exploring the color Ruby Red. You can also participate in our monthly challenge and dive in a bit more with us in our private Facebook group. The link to join is listed below. Okay, we're going to dive in to the project for today, and we're going to talk about ruby red watercolor. And we're going to paint this super fun and whimsical hibiscus flower. So I'm going to walk you through several techniques to create this fun hibiscus flower. So let's get started. Here is the sketch for the hibiscus flower, and I have provided this to you as a free download. The illustration is provided. You just take a look at the link below, and you can grab the free download for today's project. Now, let's talk a little bit about the ruby red watercolors that I pulled from my stash and a little bit of details about it. So the color I'm going to be using is Quinacridone Red from Daniel Smith. I really enjoy this color. It is a very ruby-like red color. It is a single pigment, it's PV19, which means it's a really clean color. The Daniel Smith line is brilliant, I just love it. But this red, look at it, it's juicy, and you can really change the values of it by adding water, and I love that. We're also gonna be doing a little bit of shadow work in this hibiscus, mixing quinacridone red and dioxazine purple to get a deeper ruby-like color for the shadow. Now remember, you can use whatever watercolors you have in your stash. Part of these tutorials is me providing a little bit of education about color some of my favorite brands and why I enjoy them. Okay, let's talk about the technique that I am going to cover in today's tutorial. So we're going to use this red, this ruby red color and paint this hibiscus flower. And we're only going to use that one red color. And I'm going to walk you through how to intentionally leave the white areas of the flower so we get that texture and dimension in the flower without using like a masking fluid to do it. So it's a little bit of an interesting technique but we're going to focus on wet to wet and it's going to be super fun. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to talk a little bit about the supplies I have here, just a quick run through. I have two um, brushes here. I have a really thin, small round brush that I believe is a number two, and I have a number six round brush as well. Love these two brushes. They're going to be perfect for this wet and wet technique. I have some water, and here are the four colors that I have. I have the quinacridone red from Daniel Smith. I have a manganese blue hue that we're going to use for the background. I have new gamboge. You just need a yellow. And I also just have a dioxazine purple. And I also am going to be using Cascade Green. And I'm going to show that to you in a little bit because I love Cascade Green. Okay, let's start with painting the bloom. And the technique that we're going to use is called Wet into Wet. I'm going to start by painting water into the petals of the hibiscus flower. So I'm just going around each petal and I'm just painting in water. And I'm not painting the entire petal. As you can see, as I drop the ruby red, quinacridone red color in here, you can see that I'm just dropping it into where I had placed the water in the petal. So I'm intentionally leaving white areas of the watercolor paper by not adding water to those areas. Quinacridone Red, when you drop this color into water, it basically kind of stays there. It's not one of the Daniel Smith colors that runs. 
it stays kind of where you put it. So you have to coax it a little bit. So I've intentionally painted in these like stripes of wet water and I'm I'm coaxing the paint to go into the streams of water to create that extra texture that we're going for. So I'm just going around each petal and I'm going to do the same technique. And you can see as I move around the petal, my water is starting to get a little bit tinged with uh, the red watercolor. And that's okay because it kind of helps me see what's happening when I paint the wet water onto the watercolor paper. So you can see that I'm just dropping in that quinacridone red and then I'm just coaxing it to move and flow into those little streams of water that I have painted into the petal. Okay, I'm just moving around this hibiscus. So you're going to do this technique into every single petal. So I'm just painting stripes of water, just wet water first, and then dropping in the ruby red watercolor as I go around each petal in this hibiscus flower. And you can see I'm just coaxing it through into the flowing water that's already there. Now, one thing I wanna mention, because this technique is wet into wet, and each petal, I'm not letting each petal dry before I move to the next petal. You saw that I tried to move across and just kind of give, the, give it a little time to dry in between. But there are going to be some areas of the petals, especially where the two touch, that are going to continue to be kind of wet during this whole process. And you're going to see the colors start to bleed into each other. And that's the magic of the wet and wet watercolor. And that's what makes it so much more whimsical and fun. But the basis of this technique is to just encourage and coax that watercolor to flow into the areas or the stripes of area where I have water. So we're just getting that watercolor to flow into the channels of water that I have already painted in. So here's the last petal and you can see that I'm just kind of painting in little areas and I'm leaving white in the watercolor paper and I'm letting that quinacridone red just coaxing it into the flow. I pull back a little bit and just kind of watch and see where it goes. So this tech, wet and wet technique is one of my super faves. It's just so much fun. Okay. I told you I was going to be bringing in that cascade green and I just love this color from Daniel Smith. It is a multi-pigment color, but the beautiful thing about cascade green that just makes it so delightful is that it can be cool and it can be dark at the same time. And when it dries, there's these beautiful granulation. There's this beautiful granulation that happens. So it creates a lot of extra texture and dimension in your watercolor project without adding a whole lot extra to get that texture. So the granulation is just, it's just a super fun way to add extra texture to this hibiscus leaf. And I feel like Cascade Green has a little bit of a vintage quality to it. The interesting thing about it is that when it dries, and this color, as you can see, it runs. Because it's a granulating color, I put that water down into the leaf, and I don't have to do a ton of coaxing with Cascade Green to get it to move and flow into the channels of water. So it's just a delicious and delightful color to work with. You can see it's bleeding a little bit into my quinacridone red and kind of turning a little bit purple, which is kind of fun. I'm going to leave all of those bleeds and blooms and just work with it and have some fun with it because that's what makes the whole project kind of whimsical and washy and really watercolory. So back to this cascade green. 
you can start to see in that leaf element that's in the bottom right here. We've got green hues happening. You can start to see a variation of greens happening and a little bit of a turquoise blue that's popping out. I love this. Cascade green is like one of my favorite colors just because there's so many different kinds of hues that come out. So we get that dark green, we get that mid green, and we get a little bit of that turquoise blue. And it creates a lot of extra whimsy for the project. Just love it. Look how it's bleeding with that cronacridone red, and we're getting that purple. Oh, it's just delightful. Okay, I'm going to go in here and just paint this last leaf element for the hibiscus. And I'm leaving little areas of white that are just, and you can see some of that quinacridone red that's just trying to bleed through. Now, if you don't want it to be there, just clean your brush and you can kind of just wipe, uh, wipe it away. But I really want it to just kind of stay there and let's see what happens when it mixes with the cascade green because I just think it's going to be beautiful. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. And you can see that I'm, I'm coaxing that cascade green a little bit, but I don't have to work really hard to get it to move into the color. So I'm just dropping in a little bit more cascade green. I'm going to, when this dries, we're just gonna get that nice variation of beautiful dark greens, mid greens, and that turquoise blue. Look at that blue in that lower left corner where that leaf is. It's starting to come through that turquoise blue. It's just so pretty. Okay, now I'm going back in and I'm dropping a second layer of color. Now I'm not doing this as a wet and wet technique. My paintbrush is wet. I've got wet pigment, the watercolor in my paintbrush, and my paper is dry. So I'm just gently painting and blending in this second coat of color, so to speak. This technique is called glazing. So my whole project is dry. So it's completely dry before I start this process. But I'm dropping in some color in a couple areas so that we can get some of that luminosity to happen. So when you're glazing, you want to make sure that the layer, the first layer of color is completely dry. Because when you start to add your second color, because watercolor is transparent, it starts to add a beautiful layer of color over top and it just starts to jack up that luminosity and it gets to be really, really super bright. Okay, so now we're going to move on to painting the stamen. So I have some of this new gamboge color here, and it's a really, really warm yellow kind of orangey. You could use whatever yellow you have in your stash. Just try to use something that is a little bit on the warmer side, so not a super bright yellow, because uh, stamens tend to be a little bit um, on the warmer side. So you can see that I'm dropping this color in and I'm using the wet on dry. So the paper is dry, but my brush is wet and I'm dropping the wet paint in. Now there's some areas of that bloom that are still a little bit wet. So you can see that that new gamboge is spidering out and that's beautiful. That's exactly what we want it to do. We just want it to mix and co-mingle with all the other colors that are in the hibiscus. Okay. So now I'm moving on to adding this background layer. Now I'm just going to go ahead, I've added a little bit of water with my brush and I'm going to work my way around and I'm going to just drop in some of this manganese blue hue. And you can see that some of the red, the ruby red and some of the green and some of the yellow from the stamen are going to just bleed into that blue hue. And that's cool, that's what we want it to do. Um, and that's just what kind of makes this a really washy, wet into wet kind of watercolor project. And those colors are gonna mix and mingle and cohabitate together and they're gonna make a different color. So you can see some of these purple hues that are coming out where the blue and the red are starting to mix. So it's kind of fun. You're just gonna drop this in. You're gonna wet the paper first and then drop the blue in and around the flower and it's just going to be beautiful. Okay, 
So now we're moving on to adding the shadows. And we're going to focus on adding these shadows into the center of the hibiscus flower. So I've added some of the quinacridone red, just another layer of the red, into the center of the flower. And now I'm dropping in some of that dioxazine purple. And I'm going to let the two colors mix together on the paper. So you could mix the colors up first on your palette and drop them in. But I wanted to play around with more of a wet on dry technique so that I could move those two colors around. You can see that I'm drawing them out a little bit to the outer edge of the flower. And I just want to deepen that shadow so that that stamen looks like it's coming out of that center of the flower. We're creating this look of dimension by adding a little more shadow there. And I'm loving the way this is looking. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to some of the finishing layers and some of the blending. Now, I let the hibiscus flower completely dry. And now I'm going in with a bit of a wet on dry technique. My brush is not super, super wet. And I'm grabbing quite a bit of pigment onto my brush. And I'm working from the outer edge of my blooms and drawing that color in a little bit. But you can see that I'm not adding it to the whole entire Petal. So I'm just blending it into a couple different areas so that I get some variation from lighter colors in my bloom to darker. So this is just, again, glazing. So this would be our third layer of that quinacridone red, and I'm dropping it into some strategic places just to create a little bit more variation of color. And this really jacks up the luminosity of the project as well. Now we're going to move into some of the finishing details. I've got my really super thin round brush and I'm mixing my quinacridone red a little bit with that dioxazine purple just to get a really dark color and I'm flicking, doing little flicks out from the center where the shadow work is out to the outer edges and you have fun with this. We're just creating little lines of flicked lines to create a little bit of extra texture, kind of like a veining look and feel in the hibiscus. But this is just adding another layer to our painting that really kind of jacks up that look and feel and just gives it um, a really nice finishing look. Okay, so let's take a final look at the hibiscus. I am loving this. The washy, washy look and feel of it. All of those colors, they're so delightful. They're blending together. Look at that ruby red and how it's mixed in with that cascade green. It just kind of bled and had a little party together. That cascade green, you can really see the different colors that are coming out and that granulation. Look at all that texture in those leaves. You can see some of that turquoise blue that's coming out and some really dark greens there too. It's just absolutely delightful. This was a super fun project that came together real quick and I hope you had just as much fun as I did painting it together. I hope you enjoyed today's art exploration tutorial. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel and head on over to Kelly and Jessica's channels to subscribe and watch their color exploration for this month as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.